Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today is a very special episode. Um, for those of you that have been uh, listening to this show for a while, you know that I bring on Kamar Zaman once a week to teach a, a master class on, on marketing, branding, PR, press, I mean, you name it. Kamar um, knows a lot, and uh, we, we get to pick his brain once a week on this. So first thing first, Kamar, welcome back to the show. Awesome to have you here today. Hey, Adam, thanks for having me back, and super excited to discuss something new today. That's awesome and uh, excited to get into today's topic. So today, Kamar chose a topic where he's bringing the controversy. So this is going to be good. We don't always cover a controversial marketing and I would argue PR um, subjects, but today we're going to talk about the as featured on or the as seen on branding that you may see maybe on LinkedIn or some other things and uh, and get Kamar's take on this. So I, I'm interested to hear, you know, kind of from his angle, what what works works, what doesn't, what's ethical, what's not, because he's been in the business a long time. Kamar, I think just to kind of refresh the conversation, it's been a couple episodes since we've done this. Maybe just give the audience a little bit of your history and your background in PR so that it kind of sets the stage for when we get into the full topic of the, you know, the as featured on, as seen on that people use in branding. Absolutely. So my background is I started digital PR in 2008. I've been doing SEO for a long time, but digital PR 2008. And I've helped build branding for, from very small to very large corporations. And uh, I do this, I drink the Kool-Aid every single day. And I've been doing this so long that I know what is a good thing uh, from a PR perspective. We have done articles on that. We have done videos on that. But what needs to be avoided so you're not getting scammed? Because not only do you lose money, which is not a big thing, but if you lose credibility, now you have to fix that through reputation management, and that can, that can cost you a pretty penny. So I wanted to bring this topic, though controversial, but it's because our show is about education. If you don't educate, a kind of like a consumer report, then you know you are going to miss out because not everybody is an expert in these PR and branding strategies. That's awesome. So maybe just to start off with, for those that are listening, the the as featured on or the as seen on, those are those logos that you'll see on maybe on somebody's LinkedIn or otherwise. Maybe Kamar, just give us a view of the landscape and what you see to get us started. The reason this topic came to my mind because I had a call with a prospect last week. He contacted me. We had a call with him, and he said that I have been featured on. And then he gave me some names, and I like this business model. I've been dabbling in marketing and PR. He's kind of, I think, retired just by having a discussion. So I love this concept, I, and I would like to use your service to sell the service to my clients. So I started to – that was a red alert for me. So I said, okay, well, tell me what's your perception of it. And then he told me the guy was very legit. So he told me. I went and I was, you know, I was kind of interviewed by some company. I'm not going to mention their name, but, and they put me, 
they they sold me as seen on as featured on feature and then it really i liked it and i would like to sell that so then i told him how did it work for you uh, that's when he was like paused so i said okay well if i was to google your name let's see if you are still seen on so i googled his name i didn't google any keyword i didn't google anything and i just key, keyword search his name and i did not find him anywhere on the search results i couldn't even find him his his own linkedin page which he should own by himself so he he was kind of disappointed but then i said well okay let's do a search for some other variations and we couldn't find it so so i told him that definitely didn't work and then he opened up he says yes i agree you know i was taken for a ride but i do like this so maybe you can guide me and i said well first of all i would not recommend you selling that service in the way that you are telling me there are ways to do it so that's the reason i kind of thought about talking about this subject so if if you are ready adam i want to start from a micro thing and then go into the detail of what exactly is happening in the marketplace yeah let's do it because i know you you've kept me a, a kind of abreast on what's going on so this will be fun because then the uh, audience gets to hear some of the conversations we've had offline so go ahead okay so the first thing if you do a google search and you type sc sc non for example and you go to the google images you will see these companies selling multiple services so the first thing you want to do is if you ever get a call from somebody and says you know i can get you as featured on or as seen on do a google search and see what is their name of their company to see if they are the ones mostly sites that are showing up are fiverr and big other sites that are selling they're not big sites but they are kind of fly by night operations they are selling the service so if you see them uh, try to run away as fast as you can because that's not a way you want to do it now what you will typically see you will see an image and i'm actually reading out from google image search myself you will see guaranteed placement and it won't cost thousands and then there's a picture of a lady and then it says abc nbc cbs fox as seen on we'll allow you to legally and ethically claim as seen on so this is a very funny you know topic that they are guaranteeing you placements in these top publications abc nbc fox etc they cannot do that there's nobody who can guarantee you even if you're a journalist that work for this publication that's not the way they can so this is a scam run away now what are they trying to sell you what they're doing is they are working with some pr companies who position or send out press releases to these outlets abc and bc cbs fox and they are writing a press release and they are sending meet adam torres you know he's a podcaster blah 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 they are putting your picture they are putting a link back to you and they are positioning you and that press release will get published on these sites so compared to what they were giving you it is getting published but here's the the red flag when you see a real rolex and when you see a fake rolex how do you compare the real rolex is really heavy you can tell the the replica which is a fake rolex will look exactly the same but is very very light if you hold it no so the difference is when you see this logos appearing on the site these are news affiliates this is not the real fox news network it's an affiliate so there are affiliate stations that have been allowed to publish content on their site for revenue and so you are not getting a link or a mention or a placement on these sites as the real abc nbc you are getting on the news affiliate so that's one thing very very important but nowhere in this image that i'm looking at or many other images 
they are talking about that. You know, I'm seeing another image that says celebrity endorsement get featured on NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox. So I took one step further, and because I know these publishers, I contacted them and I spoke to them, hey, guys, you know, people are selling this service, and they did not know themselves. And they said, you know what? We are going to make reach out to companies that are actually using our name to do that. So they are in their process of, you know, doing that. But these things take time. So when you get somebody selling you, just make sure that is the press release being positioned and it's on an affiliate site. So that's an important thing that you need to know. And so, okay, so that that's helpful. So it gives us an idea of the landscape and how people are maybe mis- mispositioning. So what's the right way to do it then? Like if that so site right, was trying to do yeah. it, like what, would, what should they be doing it to do it right? Would they add the word affiliate then? Or like obviously it sounds like there's a bunch of things wrong there, but like what would yeah, make it right? A lot of things wrong. So first of all, the terminology as seen on means that a journalist positioned you, even if you put the word affiliate, the word when I read the word as seen on, and featured on, that gives me the understanding that one of the journalists from the affiliate site or the main site has interviewed you, but that's not the case. These are self-proclaimed publicity. So the difference between a real PR is where you write the PR you send out. This is called manufactured branding, okay? So... If it smells like this, it is what it is. So that's the thing that needs to be fixed is these are not endorsements by the journalist. And what happens if you look at any of the PRs at the end, what they say is this: there is a disclaimer. These press releases or articles are not an opinion of ABC, NBC, Fox. These are independent, published by these sites. So when you are looking at that, first of all, that's a red flag. The next thing is ask for a report. And if you see a report that shows that disclaimer, you know that that's not as seen not question it. Because as seen means I was interviewed by Adam Torres. It's not the case, you know. Mm, interesting. And so the why would somebody kind of go down this route for branding anyway? Like what would be the point there? Because there is a right way to do it. And I definitely want to spend some time on that. Like why would somebody do it in, in that case? Uh, like what's the point in doing it in general? So the problem is that the, the way that you are doing it, the way I'm doing it is the hard way. Like think of it. You interview people, then you get to know them, they come on the show, and then you write the PR, then they publish the PR, and they get good endorsements from different places, and there is no such thing as a seen on. Now, that's hard way, it takes time. This one is mm-hmm. it's very easy. It's, they make it sound like it's very hard, and they will get an email, and they will send you this email and I am going to, if you give me a second, I will actually answer because I know you like to dig deeper, right? So I'm going to send you this. And so I guess my, my point in asking that question is if somebody's doing it the right way, mm-hmm. is it worth them going down that route? So meaning if there's so many like, you know, people out there scamming, then if there's people doing it the right way, is it still worth the effort? And I, I mean, for no. the customer, the, 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 the client that's out there trying to, I mean, um, trying to get featured like for real, not the wrong way, but the right way. Is that a, is that a good use of their time? Would you argue? Yes. If, if the client is doing it the right way, then that branding definitely helps you because if your content shows up on NBC legitimate affiliate site, people consume the content, but they are going to say, oh, well, Adam interviewed Kamar Zaman and we found this article. This is meaningful, okay? Because you are telling them something mm-hmm. different. But if you are if you're faking it, and you put yeah. this signature and you put on LinkedIn that I was seen on, I was featured on, 
So if I looked you up and I saw you, you were featured on CBS, and then I bought something from you, you have then now lied to me in that respect, and that is, it, it's a bait and switch. That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. Mm, yeah. So I get no, this email sense. from this guy. So I get this email from the guy that is trying to sell me, and he doesn't know that I'm in PR. He says, hey, mm. Kamar, I talked to three buddies from Fox, NBC, and CBS, and your name came up. I told them that you and a handful of other people have been reading my content for a while, and my friends brought up, and they are having a little trouble filing it up. So I've made this arrangement with NBC, CBS to get you featured. Wow, that's so, wow, that's crazy. I've never even heard of an email like that. (laughs) Right, and if you, and I'm not reading you the whole email, there's only five spots available, and this is the first come, first serve. Book your call and get published on Fox, NBC, CBS, and 200 news websites, okay? Mm. Now, that's to me. Now, if if this was me who did not know anything, what do you think I'm going mm-hmm. to do, right? I'm going to yeah. book a call. I'm going to pay for it. They charge 600 to $900, and I'm buying mm-hmm. something that is going to just be ridiculous. So that's mm-hmm. that's the reason that I try to warn people about this scam, and, and you should warn people that, you know, through this podcast. Now, so you told me, you told me, I know we talked about this a while ago, and you said, like, mm-hmm. on Yahoo and some other things, like, there was all kinds of the, the, these scams that are that are kind of sprouting up, and they're really just giving the PR industry a bad name. Like, it's, it's a right. shame. So, that, like, the, the, so that's the, like, funny that you mentioned that, because a few months ago in April, I don't know if you recall, there were posts going on, top 10 Instagrammers endorsed by Yahoo, top 10 real estate realtors endorsed by Yahoo Lifestyle. And these guys were doing the same thing. They would go out, talk to 10 people, just collect their money, write one article and publish, and Yahoo came to know about it. And Yahoo editor busted them, and a lot of companies were... Uh, red flag and a lot of accounts were banned, etc. So it's really, really the good PR gets a lot of bad rep because they think, well, Adam, you know, why am you know I, I'm on your show? Why am I not getting featured? You know, on Yahoo because that's not the way it works. So you know, we do different PR compared to what these guys are selling. What are and they, they do this um, on, Yeah. Yeah, so so what are some of the so you told us what to look for in the companies that are not doing it ethically. What are some let's take the other side of it. What are what are some of the things that um somebody should look for and and kind of know like when they see a company that they're like, "Oh, this is a legit company. Like they're doing real PR and real work." Like what are some of the signs there that let somebody know they're on the right path? So the first thing is when you are doing the right thing for example, you interview somebody, you are the expert, you are the host of Mission Matters podcast. So when they look at your content, the editors on these sites, the Fox News, etc., they look at the content and they say, okay, we know the subject matter expert is not the person being interviewed, but the host. So they are using your brand halo and you have a Mission Matters brand halo. So your brand halo is being used, and that is what is the first thing the editor looks at. So that's the first thing. If the article is written by somebody who does not have any endorsement, then that is not worth the money that you paid for. So the, the right thing is look at who is interviewing you. Look at what's his credibility, how many PRs has he done, and has he done the same thing for his clients? So that's the very first thing you want to look for. The other thing is that compared to this report that I just mentioned, these brand features, we call them as seen on, they are deleted after 90 days to six months. So you are as seen on 90 days, maximum six months. 
if this was something legit, it will stay on the internet for the rest of its time. So that's another thing. So when you are comparing, you can ask the client that whoever is selling you to this says, give me a report that was six months old. And you will click on every link and 80% of the links would have died because what these companies are doing and they're deleting those links from there. So that's another thing to look for. But you want to look for that person that is interviewing you to make sure that this is a legit uh, placement and it's a paid PR placement. It's not a as seen on. It's not like as seen on means a journalist report is reporting about you. That that's mm-hmm. not the way to do it. It needs to be the person that interview you. If you if you are interviewed by you know Oprah Winfrey, then it's okay. You know it it will say this mm-hmm. interview was done by Oprah Winfrey. If this was done by Adam Torres, it will say at the end Adam Torres interviewed. John Doe, you know, but those type of PRs are not done that way because they don't want that way. They're not giving their endorsement. The guy that sent me his email, he's not putting because he knows he's getting in trouble from that. So. Yeah, it makes sense because basically it's just trying to it's trying to kind of churn the service and trying to just get the release out there. But there's no real no real story behind it. There's no real write up. There's no real no real journalism or anything of that nature. So it just becomes like a, like um, kind of reselling or just kind of like trying to kind of almost like spamming the the PR wire if they can until they get until their account yeah. gets flagged and then they can't do it and then maybe they set up another one or who knows or maybe they get another business. But that. That sounds. Am I understanding that right? Is that kind of how it works on that end? It sounds like I don't know. Correct. All they're doing is you can give them whatever story and they will publish it. After editing few things, they don't verify the identity. So if I say that I was the prince of Zamunda, then I am the prince of Zamunda. <laughs> there's there's no there's no validity. Okay. So in your case, I'm sure if somebody says to you, Adam, That's I was the funny. prince. Of, you are going to, I'm sure, question it at some point. Says, okay, well, I'm interviewing. Well, yeah, because well, I'm well, I'm, well, I'm talking to them on the phone, so I'm talking. Yeah. I'm also looking at them on a video when I do my interviews. So yeah, I can see them, and I, I will say that if it said Prince of Zamunda and I looked on LinkedIn and they were, I'd be like, wow, this is an interesting one. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to fact check this one. Does it, can anybody else? Yes, say you were? exactly, exactly. <laughs> so the word fact check is you are doing fact check. PR, the traditional PR is fact check. The other things that are being done are not fact checked. So you know, there's no fact yeah, check. Yeah, that's that's. So let's do, let's take the the conversation one step further. So we looked at you know obviously like what it, what PR looks like when it's being done completely wrong and and just kind of on the scam level. Then we looked at you know what what it looks like to be done ethically and you know some of the things that will will that you can look for in in a good PR company like obviously if it's if it's just somebody fabricating stories if they're not you know doing a lot of work behind it if there's not an interview if there's not something else that shows value then it's pretty straightforward like that it's something's up there right so right. now um kind of going past that like what is in in your opinion what is like like good PR, like what can be the result of that? So why, so, and I just, and the reason why I want to, I want you to go into what the good result of doing good PR can be is just to encourage people to not be, to be turned off from the industry just because of a couple scammers out there. Like that's the main thing is that like, you know, we don't want that to happen. Like there are some great benefits of doing PR. So, uh, and it's worth sifting through or not dealing with, you know, the scammer out there and, and actually working with reputable company. So maybe give us a little bit of insight into what you've seen happen through your career when you do good PR. Yeah. Uh, So the purpose of the PR or the right PR is after you have created a product or a service that you want to announce, you want to use the traditional high quality PR just the way that we do it and you want a content writer to write a press release that that's written AP style and says press announcement. Here is this company, Mission Matters podcast. Today we have interviewed Kamar Zaman. Kamar has the following opinion on the subject matter. We have verified the facts, and that's the, and Kamar has invented 
a new artificial intelligence software that does X, Y, Z. After you have done that, the second thing is publishing it. So once we publish the PR, it gets verified by real editors and the real editors will then publish it. At that point, what you just did, Adam, is called amplification to the story, okay? You took my story, you wrote it in a way that the PR should be communicated, and now it's amplified. And now it goes to a journalist. So when we, Kiss PR, sends out a PR, we do two things. One, we send out to a journalist through their database. The second thing is we publish it online. Online meaning some outside website that we have a partnership with. But when we send it to the journalist, the journalists get a feed from us because we are trusted compared to somebody else. We are kind of like a post office, sending mm -hmm. it, sending that PR to a journalist and he's going to say, okay, today I've got a new PR announcing XYZ on Mission Matter Podcast. He's going to take a look at it. If he finds something really interesting, he's going to make a note and call you and says, Adam, I found your PR on the internet. I'm interested. I am from NBC 11. I would like to interview you. We're in a good time. And so giving you the example of that, I work with a lot of lawyers. I work with healthcare companies, and this happens to them. My job is not to call the journalist. My job is to first create a good story. I have to create a good story, otherwise the journalists are not even calling me. So once that is done and it's found on the wire, then I have had clients that have been interviewed by Lester Holt. They have been interviewed by local journalists. They have been interviewed by some top journalists. They have been interviewed by journalists from Forbes Entrepreneur. Those are the ones that call them. And at that point, they are connected. They just keep me in the loop. And that's when they are actually now talking and getting the story out. And that is the high-end PR. So my job is tier two. And when a Wall Street journalist calls you, that's tier one. He found it. He looked at it. Now he's doing it. So we have many, many success stories behind that. It's not like I, I have a magic pill that I can press a button and it happens. It doesn't happen that way. I do have relationships. I send that story because I know what is the journalist looking for. If I've met his guidelines, then based on that, he gets featured. I have lawyers that have been featured in Al Jazeera and CNN. I have healthcare companies that have been featured. Because we wrote a good story, we talked about a good product, it was written in a very good educational way, but there was no hype in it. That's what we are looking for. And that's, that's, awesome. that's, the, hard, that's the hard way. No, that's that's called ad featured on. Yeah, then you can say, you know what, I was <laughs> featured on. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, Kamar. Man, what a great topic today and what a great education because I didn't even I didn't even know some of the things you were talking about. We do quite a bit of PR and I was like, whoa, I didn't really understand. I never got one of those emails or things like that. So this is very helpful. So that being said, if somebody, first off, it's been great having you back on the show today as always. Always have a, a great time and, and learn a lot from you as I'm sure our audience does as well. And if somebody's listening to this and they want to continue the conversation, with you and learn more about what you're doing and, and uh, your company, KISS PR. What's the best way for them to connect with you and your team? The, the best way is uh, go to KISS PR. And actually, if you look at our homepage, says the KISS PR equation is very simple. Storytelling through news media. Genius is free. We only charge for placements. In other words, we will do the hard work interviewing everything, and then we will place your PR in where we think it would get you the real featured placement. Awesome. 
Well, Kamar, great having you back on the show. Look forward to our next episode together. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. Hope you learned a lot. If you did, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. Definitely want you to be a return listener and a return visitor. And uh, Kamar, until the next time, look forward to our next one. Thank you, Adam.